Hey guys, I'm Mitch and welcome to the Audio Dabble YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to do part two of my Sequencer Masterclass where I go over the arranger and the instruments. So stay tuned. This is Sequence, so let's dive in and see what this app is all about. This is the arrangement view. Down the side you have the tracks and in the timeline you have the parts or clips or patterns. Click on the 5-pin MIDI icon to get to the instruments. Tapping on the gear icon will bring up the options for that particular instrument. You can rename it, you can select the destination that you want the MIDI to go to, and you can select the channel and you can select the color. This is also where you would set the MIDI CC information for that particular track. You can choose from any of the ones listed above or if you click on the number icon, you can specify your own MIDI CC number and you can give it a name. The base app allows for 3 CCs per instrument, but there is an in-app purchase that will allow up to 12 per instrument. If you highlight the centered button, the CC message would respond similar to a pitch bend. If the return is highlighted, then that means it will return back to zero when not in use. You can navigate to another page of CCs by clicking the arrow. Let's go ahead and add another CC message. You will notice a little keyboard icon next to the MIDI CC message. This will allow you to use it on the on-screen keyboard. The keyboard itself is limited to three at one single time. So in order to add it, you need to uncheck one of the other ones. Let's add another instrument. This can be done by clicking the plus sign at the end, or you can click the plus sign underneath one of the instruments. This would add it next to that particular instrument. You can also reorder the instruments by clicking the arrows to the left or to the right. This is helpful in order to keep things neat and orderly. Now let's finish setting up the new instrument. Now this is hardware, so I selected a host port, named it hardware, and clicked on channel 11. You'll notice a send sync icon. By clicking this, Sequencer will send out MIDI sync information. In order to sync with a DAW, use Absolute. For a loop-based app, use Relative. Now, if you would like an external app to sync with Sequence, you have to create a dummy instrument for it, with the Send Sync option enabled, even if you do not want to use it for any of its sounds. Sync is also not channelized. Back in the Arranger view, I'm going to go over some simple editing. You can use one finger to scroll, two fingers to pinch and zoom in and out. You can also tap and hold to start a rectangular select. This will select all parts touched by a rectangle drawn with your finger. You can also double tap in an empty area to deselect all of the selected parts. Depending on the selection mode, a single tap will either add to the current selection or it will replace the current selection with the one tapped on. If you double tap on a single part, this will enter into the piano roll of that particular part. I will be covering the piano roll in greater detail in another video. To add a track, simply click on any of the plus signs that you see on the screen. Click on the gear icon to change which instrument it points to. You can name the track by clicking on track name, typing in the name of the track that you want. I'm going to create another track for the bass instrument and call it filter. This will allow me to use it for just MIDI CC information and keep it separate from the MIDI notes. It also allows for a cleaner, more organized setup. You can also adjust the delay and the swing for each track. Note that this does not affect the data, it only affects the playback of the MIDI notes. This is useful for offsetting kicks or adding a little bit of groove. Similar to the instrument window, you can move tracks up and down to keep things nice and grouped together. Each track also has a mute and solo button. One of the most useful tools in this app is the selection mode. There are two modes for selecting parts. It's either add or replace. When add is selected, each part that is clicked on is either selected or deselected. With replace mode, it replaces the currently selected with the newly selected item. You can invert the selection to select everything but what is selected. If you would like to select an entire track, select one item and then click track. If you would like to select an entire instrument, select one of the items and then click on the instrument. This will select all items related to that particular instrument. You can also deselect everything by clicking none or select everything by clicking all. Again, I'm going to double tap to deselect everything. One option I did not show you was linked. I'm going to click on crash six and I'm going to create three additional duplicates. These are linked parts that I will discuss in a moment. By clicking on linked, it will select all of the linked items. Moving on to the bottom, when you select a part, 
three options become visible. This is delete. In the arranger, it has 64 undo redo steps. You can also duplicate the selection by clicking the plus sign or clicking on the one with the chain duplicates and links the parts together. This has some nice advantages because any edits done to one will affect all of the ones that are linked. This is especially useful with drums and chord progressions. To create a new part, simply click on the pencil icon in the bottom left. Click anywhere in the arranger view and drag to the desired length. Once the new part has been entered, you can simply double tap in order to go to the piano roll. Once there, you can start entering in the notes. You can also enter the piano roll by clicking on the icon in the bottom right once a item is selected. Another extremely useful tool in the arranger view is the magic wand. With a part selected, click loop on and it will loop that particular part to the end of the track. You can turn it off by simply typing loop off. The loop parts will also stop if it meets another part on the same track. This allows for maximum flexibility because you can move parts around and the loop will grow or shrink as needed. With the loops on, you can convert all of those loops to parts. This would be extremely useful in creating a bunch of hi-hat patterns or chord progressions so that you could edit the parts later to add variation. The magic wand also gives you the ability to name a selected part. So if you had one part that was a breakdown or a bass drop, then you could name them accordingly and keep things nice and neat. Also note, if you name one that is linked, then it will affect the name of all of them. Now with two linked groups selected, you can choose to join them, making one large part, or if you want to divide a part into two, then move the playhead, select the part that you want to divide, click on the magic wand and hit split. This will split the part at the playhead, creating two individual parts. Now if you have several linked parts that you want to create a variation of, then you can simply click the two linked parts that you have and click the unlink button. This will make it so that changes to one will not affect the other. Now at the top of the screen you can edit the tempo. You can also go halftime if you want to. You can adjust the tempo by sliding the tempo up and down. You can change the time signature by clicking on the plus and minus button. You can do anything from 12, 15, 4 to 17, 2. The options here are pretty limitless. There is also a metronome that has two modes, audio, which is just a generated click, or in MIDI mode, it will send out MIDI note information to a synth or destination of your choice. You can also show and hide the ruler by clicking on the ruler icon at the top. Next is the loop mode. If you click on a part, you can loop that section by simply clicking section. If you want to select a different part and loop it, then you can simply click on a different part and click loop section. This will loop that section until you turn the loop off. If you are inside of the piano roll, then clicking loop part will loop that specific part that you're currently editing. This is very handy if you just want to edit that particular part, but you do not want to have to exit out, loop, and then open it again. Next, we will move on to the quantization options. The record quantization options can be set from anywhere from two to 64. You can also set it to triplets or dotted notes. If you have N selected, it will quantize the note link to the quantization settings. You can also tap the record button in order to record the MIDI in from the selected track. You can stop the entire sequence or play the entire sequence. Another nice feature is being able to zoom onto parts. So select one part, hit zoom, and it will zoom into that area. Tapping selection will zoom to that particular selection, or you can tap all to zoom out. One other neat feature is the ability to add multiple program changes on a single track. Simply move the playhead to where you want the program change to go, click the plus sign at the bottom left, and choose program change. You can add multiple program changes along a single track. You can also use the plus sign to add an empty part at the playhead. With a new part selected, three sets of double arrows appear on the screen. You can expand the selection, move the selection horizontal or vertical. This makes it really easy to get precise movements. Also in the plus menu, it allows you to copy and paste different parts. Select the part you want to copy, hit copy. Then you have the option to paste it duplicated or paste it linked. This will paste the items at the position of the playhead. 
A trick you can do using the modular nature of this app, if I want to duplicate the filter that's on the base and add it to the hardware, I can simply add a new base track, copy the filter, paste the item, then move it down to the newly created base track, and then simply change the destination to from the base to the hardware. And now that track and that filter are pointing at the hardware instead of the base. And that should do it for the instruments in the arrangement view. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video, part two of my sequence series. And part three, I'm gonna really dive into the piano roll and we actually start building up some, building up a track. You'll actually hear some music instead of me talking the whole time. So that should be a lot more enjoyable. As always, likes are very much appreciated around here. So if you like my video, if you learned something out of it, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you are, make sure you get the little bell icon. So that way you'll get notified when I put up new content. I do have a Patreon and a PayPal. All relative links are in the description. And just feel free to share your my video on your favorite social media site. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.